There is some new information regarding blood type in COVID. We want to point out that patients with either O or B blood type are less susceptible to either catching the virus or to having severe symptoms if they do. How reliable is, is the evidence suggesting this, and what does it mean for treatment? You know, I think this is going to end up being a good trivia question in the next few years with pandemic 2020. Uh, ultimately, there's nothing we can do to change our blood type. I think it's interesting to know that if you have a blood type O, that you have decreased stays in the ICU. And get this, you might also have a decreased risk of getting COVID-19. If you look at the genetics of what type of blood type you have, you get that directly from your parents. There are certain proteins on the surface of these red blood cells that determine which blood type you have. Well, you're not gonna be able to change your blood type. And it's not like I can tell patients with blood type O, take off your mask and you can go to the bars and live freely. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what blood type you have, you've got to pay attention to safety measures. Mm -hmm. The winter surge of COVID has begun. That's according to an influential modeling group at the University of Washington, which now predicts about 160,000 more Americans could die by February 1st. 32 states are trending up in reporting new cases. There were more than 70,000 new cases across the country on Thursday, the highest daily count in months. 12 states have just seen their highest ever seven-day averages of new cases. People are just tired. They're tired of months of mask wearing and social distancing. They're letting down their guard. And unfortunately, the coronavirus is not done with us yet, even if we are done with the coronavirus. And so we really do need to double down on the basic measures Mask wearing is number one, number two, number three. In fact, that same modeling group at the University of Washington says if 95% of Americans wore masks in public, more than 100,000 lives could be saved through February. Meantime, the head of the National Institutes of Health said a vaccine won't be the magic bullet if enough people don't get it. I've been talking so optimistically about how we are likely to have a vaccine by the end of the year. But if only 50% of Americans are interested in taking it, we're never going to get to that point of immunity across the population where this COVID-19 goes away. It could be here for years. In three coronavirus hotspots in the U.S., vastly different approaches to mask wearing. The mayor of New Orleans says anyone not wearing a mask in her city could get a $500 ticket. But in South Dakota, the governor tweets that the government should not mandate mask wearing. Quote, those who don't want to wear a mask shouldn't be shamed into it, she says. We need to respect each other's decisions. And in Colorado, a federal judge has sided with two churches who sued. The judge ruling that the churches don't have to limit their indoor capacity and don't have to require parishioners to wear masks. It goes squarely against Colorado's COVID-19 rules. We will worship together. We will have congregational singing. And we could do that without the government interfering. I find that somewhat confounding. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there is no religion in the world that does not put human life as the number one priority, the number one value. The chicken itself, uh, it's almost nauseating. <laughs> My favorite thing is coffee. I drink it many times a day. When I smell it now, it smells like um, like burnt tires. Garlic here. When I'm smelling this, like straight up, it's like garbage. I went from no smell to like maybe two, three weeks of mild smells returning. And then the smell went from coming, like returning gradually, like slowly, mildly, to just taking a very bad turn. You go through that, maybe it's just a weird day, maybe something is spoiled, maybe the coffee is rancid, maybe, you know, 
And then you realize, like, it's not, you know? I thought there was something going on in my house. I really thought something died in my garage. It's been about three weeks since I've been smelling that burning plastic smell when I eat or shower, or brush my teeth. Normally when you're sick and something's wrong, you go to the doctor. They give you the comfort of knowledge. This is what it is. This is the treatment. You know, but it's not really cut and dry in this situation. It's unknown, and I think that's the unnerving part. I think the hardest part about it is not knowing how to explain it to people. And it's kind of like, it's become such like a big part of my life because it's something that I'm dealing with every day. I've had a lot of anxiety about having COVID and not knowing like what effects it can have on my life going forward. And when I'm still having lingering side effects seven months later, eight months later from when I was diagnosed, then like, it really worries me.